Permanent Triangulation by the Narcissist One is never enough for us. Two or more are required. When we commence our seduction of you and launch those missiles towards you, bearing love, passion and desire, we repeatedly tell you that you are the one. You are the only one that we want. All of our life we have waited for this moment to be with the one, you. The singularity of number meets singularity of purpose. One is all that we want. We tell you this, we text you this, and we do so repeatedly in order to put you on that pedestal. The world may as well just be populated by you and me. Nobody else matters. All we want is you and you alone. The effect of such words makes you feel extremely special, revered and worshipped, and it feels wonderful, doesn't it? Being the sole recipient of our attention, such wonderful, dedicated and loving attention is uplifting, joyful and magnificent. Some time ago, I saw a quote from Robert A. Heinlein, which involved the concept of kissing. Essentially, this quote referred to the fact that when most people kiss, they are not putting their all into it. They have other things on their mind. They might be worrying about work. They know they have to put the rubbish out. They are wondering what is for dinner. And as a consequence, that person's kiss is nowhere near as it should be, because that person has distractions. The person they are kissing does not have their total attention. There is considerable merit in such a proposition. What we, as narcissists, do, however, is make you think that nobody else matters, that you are the only person that we are kissing, have ever kissed, and will ever kiss again. We make you the centre of our universe. And you believe it. Yet the reality is that whilst we exhibit this singularity of attention upon you, we have so many other people in mind. The triangulation is always there. Understand that when you are with one of our kind, there is never a time when it is just you and me. There is always you, me, and her, or him, or them. Your dynamic with us is not exclusive. It never is. Even in the golden period for the intimate partner primary source, there must be others involved in the games that we play. You are shared throughout the entirety of your relationship with us, from the beginning until, well, forever. I do not necessarily mean that we will be engaged in a sexual relationship with someone else when we are in the relationship with you, but the fact is that when you think that it is just you and I, there's far more going on than you will realise. But... I, of course, will share this with you. At the outset, when the narcissist is seducing you, we make you feel like the only girl in the world. However, there will be at least two other dynamics ongoing. The first is that I will be embarking on a campaign of devaluation against the incumbent, intimate partner primary source, where that person exists, and in most cases they do. I might even tell you about them, as I explain how horrible and abusive that person is, or that they don't understand me, or no, we don't have sex anymore, she thinks my clothes are painted on. With the higher echelon narcissists, there may also be malign follow-up hoovers going on against a former intimate partner primary source, if the need arises. We may even tell you about the disgraceful behaviour of that individual, and how we are having to protect our interests, and if this person should speak to you, don't listen to them. They're crazy. More usually, it is you as the new star of the show, the shelf intimate partner primary source, dirty little secret, or even possibly at this stage, the candidate intimate partner secondary source, and alongside you the incumbent, but now being devalued, intimate partner primary source. This second dynamic is, at the outset, is the fact that we may also be working on another prospect as well as you. Thus, we may be devaluing the primary source, flirting with you as a secondary source of an intimate nature, and may have another intimate partner secondary source as another iron in the fire. Triangles within triangles. 
In the extremely unlikely event that you ever had access to the narcissist's mobile phone and you looked in the messages, you would very well see something like this. Message to you, 1948. I cannot stop thinking about you. What have you done to me? I love it, though. I cannot wait to see you tomorrow, even though it is too long to wait for my aching heart. Message to her, 1950. I cannot stop thinking about you. What have you done to me? I love it, though. I cannot wait to see you tomorrow, even though it is too long to wait for my aching heart. There may even be... Message to her, number two, 1952. I cannot stop thinking about you. What have you done to me? I love it, though. I cannot wait to see you tomorrow, even though it is too long to wait for my aching heart. Notoriously greedy for fuel and wary of the effects of not receiving the same, our narcissism has to ensure that we have other targeted prospects in hand. In this instance, three people all receive the same message. Because we don't actually distinguish between you as human beings, you are all appliances. You may become the chosen one as the primary source of the prime aims, but the others will not necessarily be cast into oblivion forever. They will be retained as friends who rank as high-producing secondary appliances, continuing to provide fuel even though there is no intimacy ongoing because we are now in the golden period with you as the intimate partner primary source. You think that you have us to yourself. Of course, that's the impression that we will give, and during that golden period we will not cheat on you. We may have nothing to do with those now shelved intimate partner secondary sources, or we may just interact with them in a friendly way. We continue to treat you well as the intimate partner primary source, but we may well be doling out malign hoovers to the person that you have replaced. We will continue to triangulate individuals because there is never truly just one person. You might be triangulated with non-intimate secondary sources where we compare you to friends, favourably or unfavourably. We may compare you to previous intimate partners, primary sources, favourably or unfavourably, dependent upon what stage you are at the dynamic. There is always the potential to be a third, fourth, fifth person within the relationship. During the golden period, it may seem that there is just you and I, and as the embedded intimate partner primary source, the focus is on you. But that doesn't mean that others will not enter the picture. Shelved intimate partner secondary sources may contact us, and we throw them some comfort crumbs, having no need of any intimate interaction with them because we now have you as our shiny new plaything. If the former intimate partner primary source continues to put themselves in the firing line, trying to cause trouble for us, trying to get answers from us, perhaps trying to get money from the narcissist, then the former intimate partner primary source will either be ignored or we will tell them about their tell you about their despicable behavior, thus triangulating them with you, and we may well provide them with malign follow-up hoovers for the purpose of ensuring that they are kept under control and that we are able to continue extracting negative fuel from that predecessor in the meanwhile. Then, without warning, you, as the intimate partner primary source, move from golden period to devaluation. You have your suspicions that we are playing away. Indeed, we are, as we use these secondary sources that we have kept warm. We may go and find new ones. There will be others as we find additional people to draw into our network as we play them off against you. Comparison after comparison. You will find that you are compared to these people, to friends and family, and always found to be wanting as we press the devaluation against you. After this horrendous time, you may then find yourself cast to one side with a callous disengagement, and then you're replaced with somebody else. How did that happen so quickly? How were we able to move on with unseemly haste and find someone else and we now declare our love for easily? You were being triangulated, though you may not have even realised it, and they were waiting in the wings all along. Now disengaged from, you will find that you're still involved in the dynamic, as if you continue to get in the way of our new shiny golden period, with the new intimate partner primary source, we will play you against the replacement. 
you may be smeared but even not know that it's going on but you're still being triangulated with as we declare to our new intimate partner primary source how happy we are with them and that we're so pleased that they are not like you the lunatic that we escaped from in certain instances, if you have the misfortune to be the recipient of a very rare malice campaign, we will continue to draw negative fuel from you. And then, when the new person enters devaluation, we suddenly benign hoover you to try and make you the apple of our eye again, as your short-lived replacement is cast aside. A period of vacillation may follow as we lift you up and then smash you down again. You are sat on one end of a seesaw. As you go up, she goes down and vice versa. We stand in the centre straddling this seesaw at the epicenter of the triangle and gobbling up all of the fuel that is pouring from you both. As the intimate partner primary source, you will always find that there is somebody else involved in the dynamic of our relationship. It doesn't mean that we'll be cheating on you, certainly not during the golden period, but there is always somebody else, whether intimate, although we're not acting with them in an intimate way, or entirely non-intimate, that you will be triangulated with. The addition of an extra player in the game happens throughout all of our assertions of control and the gathering of fuel. We set family member against family member, our brothers against our sisters, one parent against another. We treat one child as golden and another as a pariah as we have them compete for our blessing and affection. We pit one colleague against another as they vie for that promotion which lies in our gift. We have friend fighting against friend in order to spend time with us at the expense of the other. We enter the online realm and have people backbiting, clashing and competing all through a few keystrokes on the keyboard. We can never be satisfied with it being just you and me. We always have to involve others and that involvement cannot always be harmonious. There must be competition in order for the control to be asserted and the fuel to flow. Never think that we are dedicated to just you. Our need for control, our need for the prime aims does not allow it. There is always someone else, despite what we may tell you. It doesn't mean we're cheating, but there will be the involvement with other individuals where you are being triangulated. If you are ever able to ascertain the full extent of our machinations and schemes, you will see so many lines radiating away from us, connecting us to you, to her, and to many others, with lines running between the unknowing and knowing until it looks like an extremely complex organogram on the wall of an incident room in a police station. With the narcissist, it is a permanent triangulation. But invariably, you do not realise this. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.